in the Arctic, uh, changes are going on with a big speed. 24 different ethnic groups of reindeer herders are living in the Arctic. And we are questioning, will the culture of reindeer husbandry survive this Arctic change? I'm Svein Martisen, and I'm professor at the, the uh, near Food University here in Yakutsk. I'm an expert on adaptation to uh, uh, change in the Arctic. What we see now in the Arctic, in the circumpolar Arctic, is huge changes. Not only climate changes, but also social, economic changes, which affects reindeer husbandry. Those changes are driven by the global changes. We uh, work with different perspectives of those changes in the circumpolar north. Uh, reindeer herders affected by those changes lives in Norway, Sweden, Finland, and all the Russian Arctic, all the way from Murmansk to Chukotka. 24 different peoples are living and has been living in the Arctic for how long time? Maybe 10,000 years? Th I think that's the history of Arctic civilization. Reindeer husbandry is uh, at least 1,000 years. Some places li like in Yamal Peninsula, 2,000 years old. So actually, we talk about an Arctic civilization with knowledge, with a way of adapting to changes. Very rich in knowledge, in culture, languages. We talk about 24 different languages. And the language actually express the knowledge. For example, in the Sami language at home in Norway, reindeer herders have more than 300 words for snow and snow change. Similar, the Evén reindeer herders and Evenki reindeer herders in the Republic of Sakakutia has a lot of knowledge about snow and snow change. In Norway, my mean average winter temperature is minus 14. While in Sakakutia, the mean average temperature is uh, minus 43. Mean average temperature in December, January, and February. 43 degrees. I used to call Sakayakutia the fourth pole. You have the North Pole, the South Pole, Himalaya, and then you have Sakayakutia. So you actually, Sakayakutia is the coldest place where actually you have a civilization, permanent civilization. That means the knowledge about climate that cold climate is very rich in Sakayakutia. Here in Sakayakutia, you have the reindeer herders, the indigenous reindeer herders, with their unique knowledge about the cold. You have the uh, Evenki, Even, uh, uh, Yukagir, uh, Chukchi, and Dolgan people, all working with reindeer in the tundra, in the far north, and in the south of Sakakutia, in the taiga, every day with the reindeer. We, s we, we used to say that uh, reindeer husbandry is a human coupled ecosystem, even though it's in the tundra or actually it's in the taiga, you know? And that coupled system maintained the knowledge about the cold. Um, Sakakutia is about six times the territory of, of uh, France. 200,000 reindeer is living here. Climate change in Sakaikutia will of course be different from where I'm coming from in Norway, in the Sami area. Climate change will affect the pastures in Norway quite severe, because in winter we get closer to zero degrees. Why, since I said the, the Sakayakutia is the fourth pole, it's very cold in winter. Even eight degrees, eight degrees 
increase in winter temperature will have minor influence in the middle of the winter in northern Sakaya Kutia, middle of Sakaya Kutia in the south. But still, we see that the spring comes earlier. What is the problem of climate change in Sakaya Kutia and the rainy husbandry? It's mainly early flo flooding, the melting of the snow. It's actually the, the forest fires. So flooding and forest fires is actually a big problem in Sakaya Kutia. Uh, not the increased temperature in the middle of the winter. And we know the problem about the wolf. The wolf is a huge problem for reindeer husbandry in, 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 in Sakaya Kutia. Taiga region in southern Sakaya Kutia is may be the most interesting uh, uh, topic for scientific discussion. Because the taiga, some people say ask actually the taiga is disappearing. The people and the nature are disappearing. In China, Mongolia, Buryatia, Amur, southern Sakya Kutia. So we should be in particular concerned about the taiga and the people living in the taiga regions. And of course the reindeer husbandry. Those changes happening there is of global nature. Of course climate, but the global nature means industrial development, roads development, takes place all over the Arctic, also in Norway. N in Norway, the Sami reindeer husbandry has suffered from a lot of loss of grazing land. Adaptation to these changes, that's the most important thing. Then we talk about the solutions. How are we going to survive with all these changes? I'm very optimistic. I came here first time in 1990 to Sakaya Kutia. It was Soviet Union then. I went to the Verkoyansky Gora and I met very knowledge rich people. I'm very optimistic because in the Sami society in Norway, in the Even and Avenki society in Sakaya Kutia, there is a very deep knowledge about nature, about the biology, about the reindeer, about the traditional knowledge we call it. And I believe that we could use that traditional knowledge to further develop the society. Yes, you will have people in northern Sakaya Kutia, you will have people in the Taiga regions in the future, but then we have to allow people to use their own knowledge. It's very rich and it's very good. You could use it for the nature management, like protected areas, but you could use it also for business development. The food culture of Sakaya Kutia is unique. And we should use that to a large extent when we are developing the society. We as, as professors at the university have to make sure that that knowledge, that traditional knowledge we find in the indigenous people's culture of Sakaya Kutia should be used in the programs at the university. We have to train future leaders of the Arctic. We have to make new programs for the leaders of the Arctic where we include this traditional knowledge. So business and management is better than we have today. That's a challenge, but I think that's very optimistically because we meet a lot of young people. In the, our area, in the Sami area uh, in, uh, in the West, but also here on in the fourth pole, where it's cold, but where you have a civilization for so long time, the knowledge of Sakaya Kutia and the indigenous people of Sakaya Kutia should be kind of built into the future generations to manage the Arctic in a better way. So I'm optimistic. We should work together. We should cooperate together. Then the future of the Arctic looks very good. I believe that uh, by a systematic uh, uh, training of the future students by using this traditional knowledge, uh, we will see a different future. We will see small business development and we will see a better management of the nature. For example, uh, today it's very difficult to find reindeer meat in the restaurants in Yakutsk and in my town Tromsø in Norway. So reindeer meat 
it has a huge potential for small business development and it's good for you it's healthy and it has potential for economic development as i said so we made the last year a cookbook a cookbook where the different recipes by using reindeer meat from Sakai Kutia is used. That cookbook was delivered to the ministers of Arctic Council last year in May. And a lot of young people, students from Sakai Kutia has participated making the cookbook. It's actually not an ordinary cookbook, but it's a cookbook about sustainability. How to adapt to the changes I'm talking about. And actually, how to sustain your society is a unique book. And I tell you, the book was nominated to the four prizes of the, uh, uh, we could call it the Oscars of the cookbook. And by May this year, we will know if our cookbook about the uh, Arctic indigenous people's food culture will have a prize in the Gourmet Man uh, International Cookbook Prize in China. That's a new thing, that we are actually able to bring the knowledge of indigenous people of Sakai Kutia into the Arctic Council. Yes, we talk with the ministers of Arctic Council about it, and actually we are nominated for a cookbook, international cookbook. We will bring that even further. I hope, cross my fingers, that we will win the pr one of the prizes. And then we have to say thank you for all those knowledge provided by Sakai Kutia. But there is one way further. There is one way further that we think that the actually potential of the raw material, the reindeer meat, the fat, the bones, the head, could be much more utilized than in I it is today. It could be used for a business development in the small places in Sakai Kutia. We have to make sure that we use the adaptation knowledge the old survival knowledge. We have to use the adaptation knowledge for the future development of the small societies. Yeah, and also the bigger societies, of course. We hope that those products from the regions of Sakai Kutia will be available also in Yakutsk. So the potentials are big, but we have to systematically work at the university level. We have to provide a good education for students from the first level and all the way up to PhD levels. This means a lot of fun.